Firefighters Back on the Roof for Charity, Dan Curran's Scugog. Members of the Scugog Fire Department will be heading up to the roof of Anchor Point Fusion Grill House in Port Perry this weekend to fundraise for Muscular Dystrophy Canada. The 8th Annual Rooftop Campout will be held from 6 p.m. on Friday, May 17th until 6 p.m. on Sunday, May 19th. Over the weekend, the event will feature visits from Sparky the Fire Dog, a firefighter dunk tank, live music, a jumping castle, and demonstrations in Scugog's Fire Safety House. Fire Chief Mark Burney said at a council meeting on Monday, May 6th, It is a very exciting weekend for the fire department, and they raise monies for a good cause. The fire department's goal is to raise $30,000 at this year's event. Last year, the campout raised over $24,000. Anchor Point is located at 150 Water Street in Port Perry. The 20th Annual Grand Event, an annual spring tradition for many, is back again this year on May 25th at 7.30 p.m. at the Port Perry United Church. The church has a long history of community musical presentations. The talented choir of Port Perry United are proud to present Thanks for the Memories, a musical reflection of the events of the past 20 years under the skillful leadership of music director Joan Bretney. It all started in 1999 as a means to raise money for the grand piano, which now graces the platform in the sanctuary. The event was so well received, it has become an annual event and is in its 20th year of entertaining audiences of all ages. The grand event is presented and enjoyed by all ages. The sanctuary will once again be filled with a wonderful variety of music, sure to please. Tickets are $15 per adult, $5 for children under 12. They can be purchased at the church office on sale now. If any tickets remain, they can be purchased at the door on the evening of the show. For more information, please contact the office at 905-985-2801 or go to www.portperryunited.com. Province looks to help residents with flooding relief. Dan Currents, Kortha Lakes. Those affected by flooding in the Kortha Lakes area may be able to receive some disaster recovery help from the province of Ontario. The province recently announced the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing has activated the Disaster Recovery Assistance for Ontarians, DRAO, program for those with a primary residence in the area, tenants, and small business owners. According to a press release, the program provides assistance for emergency expenses and the costs to repair or replace essential property following a natural disaster that are not covered by insurance. Kortha Lakes Mayor Andy Lethem was happy the program is being made available for his constituents. We are very pleased that the ministry has recognized the impact of this year's flood on our residents. Now that the waters are receding, people need assistance returning to normal and repairing the damage. We want to thank Laurie Scott, MPP for Kawartha Lakes, Halliburton Brock, for diligently working with Minister Clark's staff to ensure the needs of Kawartha Lakes residents were heard, he said in a press release. Longtime Burnt River resident Rob Nelson is one of many residents in that area dealing with flooding. He told The Standard he hasn't seen flooding this bad since 1991. I didn't need this right now, Mr. Nelson commented, regarding the flooding situation he is in. For more information about the program and how to apply, go online to https colon forward slash forward slash www.ontario.ca forward slash page forward slash apply dash disaster dash recovery dash assistance or email disasterassistance at ontario.ca. Residents have until September 4th to apply to the program. Lots of local connections to OHL champion Guelph Storm. Marlo Stanfield, special to the standard. It has been a fantastic spring for the Guelph Storm, as the team charted a historic path to an OHL championship, with three Port Perry natives playing roles with the team. The Storm clinched the OHL title and a berth in the Memorial Cup Championship in Halifax after an 8-3 comeback win on home ice over the Ottawa 67s on Sunday, May 12th. Behind the bench for the Storm was Port Perry's George Burnett, as he claimed his second OHL championship. The first was with Guelph in 1998, over a storied coaching career, which also included a Calder Cup Championship in the AHL. In 2009, Burnett was enshrined in the Scugog Sports Hall of Fame. Among the deals made by the Storm to bolster their lineup near the trade deadline was a swap with Owen Sound for defenseman Marcus Phillips, a Port Perry native and member of Team Canada at this year's World Junior Hockey Championships. Phillips recently signed an entry-level contract with the Kings. 
Rounding out the local contingent was scout Claire Cornish. The former player and coach of the Port Prairie Mojax, Cornish was named to the Scugog Sports Hall of Fame in 2014 and has been a staff member in the Storm for the past two seasons, in addition to his duties with the Central Ontario Wolves midget AAA team. The Storm has made history in the postseason after rallying from 2-0 to deficits in three consecutive series. The Storm swept Kitchener in the opening round before trailing 3-0 to in a series against the London Knights but came back to reverse sweep, winning the series in seven games. Then, in the Western Conference Finals, Storm went down 3-1 to the Saginaw Spirit and rallied back to knock them out in Game 7, too. But looming in the championship round was the 67s team, who had gone a perfect 12-0 through the first three rounds. Ottawa kept rolling and took the first two games against Guelph at home, but the clock refused to strike midnight on the Storm's Cinderella season as they won four straight to claim the championship. The Memorial Cup Championship kicks off in Halifax on May 17th, and in addition to the Storm, will feature the host Halifax Mooseheads, the QMJHL champion Ruin Noranda Huskies, and the winner of the WHL Championship Series between the Prince Albert Raiders and Vancouver Giants. The History of Victoria Day in Canada, Sierra Howie. The Victoria Day long weekend in Canada is the official start of summer for Canadians, but the holiday is a lot more important than that. The government originally declared it a holiday in 1845 to celebrate Queen Victoria's birthday, which was May 24, 1819. Queen Victoria's reign lasted almost 64 years. She was Queen of England when Canada became a country in 1867, and she decided Ottawa would be our capital, and the government thought it important to celebrate Queen Victoria's birthday. After Queen Victoria's death in 1901, the Canadian government officially named the holiday Victoria Day, declaring the holiday would be celebrated on May 24th of each year, or on the 25th if the 24th happened to be a Sunday. In 1952, the Canadian government also named the holiday Queen Elizabeth II's official birthday in Canada, even though her real birthday is on April 21st. The government also decided to celebrate the holiday on the Monday before May 25th. Victoria Day is only observed in Canada and some parts of Scotland. Back in the day, people would celebrate Victoria Day by having picnics, parades, and cannon salutes. In more recent years, people mark the day by camping, fireworks, and other activities. Canadians like to celebrate long weekends, but it is important for people to know the history behind this important day. Compost is part of the circle of life in gardens. The season for fresh fruits and vegetables grown right in the backyard is upon us. Spring weather breathes life into the plants which grow fresh berries, tomatoes, eggplant, cucumbers, and many other delectable fruits and vegetables. Home gardens can be supplementally planted with delicious finds from the supermarket or farmer's market, including melons, corn, and more. The bounty of the garden can be made more abundant and fruitful with the addition of the right soil amendments. Compost is a key element of rich, nutritious soil. Scraps from items grown in the garden can be reused in the production of compost to feed that same garden. It's a continuous circle of garden life. Getting started with compost is relatively easy. Homeowners should choose an outdoor space near the garden but far away from the home so it won't be disturbed by kids or animals. Some people opt for an open compost pile while others choose closed bins to contain the possible smell and to camouflage the compost. A sunny spot will help the compost to develop faster, according to the magazine Good Housekeeping. The next step is to start gathering the scraps and materials to compost. Better Homes and Gardens suggest keeping a bucket or a bin in the kitchen to accumulate kitchen scraps. Here are some kitchen-related ingredients which can regularly be added as compostable material. Eggshells, fruit peels, vegetable peels, and scraps, coffee grounds, and shredded newspaper. At the risk of sounding self-promoting, shredded standard newspaper, along with the eggshells, is a good counterbalance for the higher acid levels added to compost which come from all the kitchen cutoffs from fruit and vegetables. This enables the compost to be of use for a wider variety of plants, as many need a more neutral pH balance to feed on. In addition to these materials, grass and other outdoor plant clippings, non-black spotted dry leaves, bark chips, straw, and sawdust from untreated wood can go into the pile. Avoid diseased plants, anything with animal fats, dairy products, and pet feces. Pretty much any non-animal-based, non-processed healthy food extras are candidates for the compost heap. A low-maintenance pile has an equal amount of brown and green plant matter in the compost, plus moisture to keep the bacteria growing and eating at the right rate. 
aerating the compost occasionally with a pronged garden tool, or, if you have a compost bin, turning the bin when possible, will allow the compost to blend and work together. Adding earthworms, purchasable at many garden centers, can really assist the breakdown of compost material, as they love chewing on and naturally processing fresh organic matter. Compost will take a few months to form completely, according to the Planet Natural Research Center. The finished product will resemble a dark, crumbly soil smelling like fresh earth. Compost will not only add nutrients to garden soil, but it can also help insulate plants and may prevent some weed growth. It is a good idea to start a compost pile as a free source of nutrition for plants and a method to reduce food waste in an environmentally sound way. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper. 